Hey, Todd. Hey, are you ready for Wade? Yes, sir. All right, let me go grab him. Hold on. Thank you, sir. Hey, Wayne, how's it going, bro? All right, all right, man. Just chilling back with some Sunday ticket, man. What's going on? Nothing much. Where are you calling from today? Uh, we are in Columbus, Georgia. Very nice, very nice. How's the weather there? Uh, very hot and humid. <laughs> yeah, we're down in South Florida. We were just in, up uh, coming from Orlando today, and it was brutal up there, man. I can only imagine. That's where we're headed next. We got three days in Jacksonville before we hit the uh, Florida shows. So, nice. I think I'm gonna need a new, uh, give me a new pair of shorts on the way there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, man. Hey, we're really looking forward to this uh, upcoming show coming next Saturday. Um, been a big fan of Saliva for so long, but I've never seen you guys perform live, so I'm really jacked up All right, to, to be reviewing this show. Right on, man. And, and, and I tell you, man, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely glad you're coming to this show because, you know, last year it was a bit of a scare with your health, and uh, it's great to see you're still, yeah. uh, that you're still with us, man. Oh, yeah, man. Actually, uh, back is feeling better than ever, man. And, uh, you know, for the new pal appreciation for, uh, for everything you have to yeah, I mean, you know, the the news reports that were coming out, you know, you start breathing, you were unconscious and all this stuff. It's like, what the hell's going on, man, you know? This guy goes out, he plays yeah, all the time, he, he seems healthy and stuff, and nobody had any answers, and then finally we heard it was yeah, pneumonia, yeah. and you were coming out of it, and it was a sigh of relief there. Yeah, man, it, it was kind of scary, man. I didn't even realize that I'd had pneumonia. It turned into double pneumonia. Because I was just kind of getting antibiotics and treating myself and didn't really go to the doctor. Before I knew it, you know, I'd gotten better and then it came back. It got better, it came back. In the meantime, all the time, all that fluid was building up in my lungs. Mm -hmm. And apparently, got enough fluid in my lungs that my heart just said, you know what? Time out. Yeah. So, uh, but I was lucky, man. Uh, the DMTs were closed. They got there, got me back breathing again, and uh, I think that was, you know, it's a real low percentage. I'm not sure what it actually is, but from what I understand, it's only about 10% folks that come out of it like I did, so I'm really lucky, man. Well, you know how us guys are. Instead of going to the doctor properly, you know, eh, we'll treat it ourselves. <laughs> right, and that's, that's what I did. You know, we had, we, kept, we had tours, you know, we had shows booked. And I would get just about well, and we'd have to go back on the road. Yeah. And then it, that happened like a couple of times, and then finally our, our New Year's Eve show and the shows after that were, were finally the, you know, the final straw. But um, luckily, you know, like I said, man, luckily I was home. I was able to get to the hospital in time. You know, if we'd been on the road, it might have been a, a much different story. So uh, sure. I'm very fortunate, man. Glad to be here. We're glad to have you, man. Now, now let me ask you now. Thanks, buddy. Now, like growing up as a kid, you know, you know, back in the day, did you know that you wanted to be a musician to earn a living, or did you have your your idea set on something else? You know what? When I was a real little kid, all I wanted to be was Kenny Stabler. <laughs> <laughs> I had no, I had no idea that I was going to be a musician. I mean, my dad was a great. Irish tenor, you know, amazing singer, and his father before him, but I didn't get the voice, so I had to kind of search to find my outlet for music, but a good friend of mine in seventh grade decided, hey man, let's get guitars, you know, and, uh, and it worked out, <laughs> <laughs> you know, got lucky, and, and from there on, it wouldn't even turn it back, so, um, now, now at that point, uh, who were some of the bands or artists that you looked up to for inspiration? Man, all, all the original, you know, I guess what you would call classic rock bands now. Yeah. Um, ACDC, or I mean, I got to see ACDC twice with Bon Scott. Wow. But, you know, crazy, crazy cool. Um, you know, all the early guitar heroes, Randy Rose, Eddie Van Halen, mm -hmm. uh, all those guys, man, I, I 
I just tried to learn as much as I could by ear off the records and kind of took it from there, man. So you're saying as a as a guitarist, you're self taught. Yeah, I mean it was there was so much talent coming out at that same time mm -hmm. to learn from. It was like an explosion of guitar players. So as a guitarist, it couldn't have been a better time to be growing up learning, you know, guitar, lead guitar. It was really, really a good time. Mm. Not to say that there's not a lot of great guitars coming out now. Sure. But it just seemed to be that, that period in the early 80s just really exploded with guitar players. Mm -hmm. Now, you had mentioned uh, not getting the voice. Uh, during performances, though, you do back, backing vocals uh, on a lot of the songs. Now, um, hmm? Back up vocals, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm somewhere in the Joe Perry range of <laughs> vocals. Um, <laughs> you know, just maybe good enough to be really low in the mix, uh -huh. and that's about it. Now, now the, the the question I was going to ask is if you do anything to maintain your voice. Because your voice is also your instrument you know, as well. Um, I don't. Um, I, I, I hear Bobby. He's got his like warm-ups that he does every night. Mm -hmm. Which the main one is him just screaming as loud as he can to see if it's all there. Yeah. And I do kind of do that at least a couple times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Not really what you would call it. Not a vocal exercise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> as much as it is us just horsing around on the bus. But, yeah, man. Now, if you've ever heard Keith Richards sing, you know, his voice isn't really there, you know. And when you ask him what he does to maintain his voice, he'll tell you. He'll just do a shot of whiskey right before he goes on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, honestly, that, that is part of the Survivor pre-show ritual. We <laughs> usually get anywhere from... 45 minutes to an hour before the set, we'll kind of chill everything out up here mm -hmm. and set out the bottle of Crown, I drink a bottle of popcorn, freezer, you know, little of this, little of that. And, you know, it's amazing what a couple of shots will do to, to loosen you up. Oh, absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm loving your ritual, man. Right on, right I, on. I think I'm going to do that before I go to work every day now. Right. In fact, we've gotten out there. The, the ritual has gone from on the bus to we just carry it on the stage. <laughs> there you go. Because, so, you know, half the people that yeah. are coming to your show have done that in the parking lot before they got into the venue, probably. And that's what I figure. Yeah. Is, hey, man. <laughs> man. As long as we're all on the same level, you know, kind of in the same zone. Yeah, makes for a good show. Makes yeah. for a good rock show. Absolutely. Now I haven't listened to it yet, uh, but tell us about Love Lies and Therapy, uh, the new album from Saliva. What can uh, um, can we expect? Something different uh, or something new? What's going on with that album? Um, couple of new things. Nothing really crazy out of the ordinary. Um, we uh, did experiment with some. Uh, with some lower tunings on this record, a couple of songs, dropping out the B and A, just getting that nice, heavier sound. Okay. Um, I got to really give credit to Bobby on this one because he, he did the lion's share of the writing on this one mm -hmm. and really, really knocked it out of the park. If we were doing it, most of the studio time we had scheduled for when I was sick. Ah. So I, I basically, you know, I didn't really have a bunch of songs ready because mm -hmm. I was still kind of nursing myself back to hell. So sure. Bobby came up to bat, Paul too, and uh, and and did most of the writing. I was able to get in on a couple songs, but um, I went to Jacksonville after most of the pre-production was done and was able to do guitars then. So, uh, but yeah, I got to give credit to Bobby, man. He uh, he pulled this one off for real. Awesome. Well, Todd's going to send me a digital download, I believe. So as soon as I get it, I'm going to take a listen. So I'm primed and ready to go Saturday. Cool, cool. Good deal, man. Sounds good, brother. All right. Well, last question. After this tour, uh, what's next for you and Saliva? Anything coming up? Um, well, after the Make America Brock Again tour, we've got literally about a week off. And then we head straight to Europe. Uh, I'm going to be going over there with soil for a month. Wow. Um, so from the 25th of October to the 27th of November, we'll be in parts 
unknown across the big pond. So, uh, but looking forward to that. Haven't been to Europe in a while, and uh, hoping that uh, we can spread the saliva word over there and, and maybe get a good following going over there now. Sounds good, man. Hey, Wayne, thank you so much for taking your time and for Absolutely, having a consideration man. today. Look forward to seeing you guys on Saturday, and we do a lot of work with uh, Miami Dolphins Foundation. If I brought you guys a guitar, would you be able to sign it for them? Absolutely, absolutely, man. We'd love to do it. No problem at all. Awesome, man. I'll come back and say hi, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, man. Come hang out with us, for sure. Sounds good, man. I'll, I'll bring some party favors. All right, buddy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Safe travels on the road, man. God bless you all. All right, man. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, bud. All right. See you, Wayne. Bye. Bye.